All right, guys. Well, first off, you know, got my got all my friends in here with me. Um, mm -hmm. Sent out a message to all of us. Got a bunch of guys in here. It's a uh, National Colon Cancer Month. Make sure you guys get screened. Boxoutcolancancer.com. Um, you know, you guys know I'm not one for uh, publicizing this stuff, but it does hit close to home, and and you know, it's the number one killer of uh, cancer killer of men under 50. So easy to get screened, contact your physician, get it done. That's my PSA for the day. Let's get on to some uh, Wildcat Hoops. This is your third one, obviously. Uh, what have you learned from the last two? Well, both well, third, but also 25th. You know, I mean, I, I, I'd learned, you know, previously. And, you know, I, I learned that you don't ever take it for granted. And, and you have to be excited to play. You know, it, it's a new beginning. And, and that's how you have to approach it. You know, you can say, oh, these seasons are long and, and all these cliches. But what's really cool about these seasons is they break down into shorter bits where there's new beginnings. And, and this is a new beginning. So with any new beginning or anything in life, I think you should always approach it with energy and enthusiasm. So that's what we plan on doing. You would love one Pac-12 um, player of the year. What has he meant to the team? Well, obviously, he's had a great year. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a great dude, great young man. Uh, we're fortunate to have him, and, and I'm really proud of him. You know, I don't, I don't think, you know, that wasn't a goal that we'd set or anything, you know. I mean, our goals are all, you know, focused within the team. And, you know, for, for him to do that means our team performed well. And, you know, for, you know, last year I think Zoo was the runner-up to a, a, a very deserving Jaime Jaquez, and, you know, they were the league champs. I mean, and he was the best player on the league champs, so that, that makes him the MVP in my book. So, uh, you know, and we were fortunate the first year to have Ben get it here, and, and, and so I think it's really good. I mean, I'm really excited for Caleb. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited for our group. You know, I, I looked at all the other awards, and there's lots of deserving guys out there. I know this. Um, you know, we have guys in this team that, that, are, that were deserving of, of more, but, you know, other teams have got good players as well, and, and we acknowledge that. I, I wouldn't trade any of our guys for anybody. I, I love the group we have, and um, I, I'm excited to, to, for us to take the next steps in our journey. I'm just, I'm just following up on that. Do you feel like the, the balance you guys have had maybe hurts you when it comes to these individuals? Well, the, I mean, I mean, we, we don't play for individual awards. So if, if balance adds to the strength of the team, I mean, I think it's only a positive. I don't think there's any way to look at it anything other different than that. And, uh, you know, we have great players and, and good dudes. And, you know, I mean, you could make a case for, you know, Pella. I mean, not being on the first team. Okay, I mean that that's fine if that's what others think. Uh, you know, Keyshawn, you know, not being all defense or honorable mention. I mean, you know, you can make all these cases. I could go down the list. Jaden Bradley, you know, six man of the year on, on a team that played well. But you know, like I said, there's other good players, and it's just not that easy. You know, when you when you slice and dice awards, and and obviously we're looking at it very Arizona centric. But um, but I love the guys we have, and and, and they're deserving, and, and and you like for them to get those accolades because I know it means a lot to them and their families. But but the main focus for us is always team, and and you know and and, and I say that with all sincerity. We talked about Caleb several times this year. How you had those conversations with him early on in the year about fitting into this team and being, you know, the number one team guy. He came in with the right mindset. Then he saw the individual rewards. Is that what you want for players in your program to get those to get honored after really embracing that team mindset? Well, for sure, for sure. I mean, I, I think that's the only way you do get honored. And, and, you know, it, it's an ongoing battle. It, it really is. You know, you're, you're, you're fighting for your culture. Um, you're fighting for individual growth every single day. And, and it's not just an upward trend. Like, like, for example, Caleb didn't play good last game. You know, and, and fortunately, he had stacked together a bunch of good games before that for us and for him. But, uh, but you know, the, those are continuing conversations that he and, have, he and I have. Of just getting, getting this award doesn't mean that he's arrived. I mean, I mean you know, honestly, he's still a work in progress, as am I, as is our team. So, um, so yeah, so, you know, I mean, I, I don't think, getting back to your main question, I don't think there's any other way to uh, win an individual award unless you embrace the team. After Saturday, you, uh, you referred to maybe USC gave you a gift. Were you meaning more from the, the schematic side or just the motivation side? I mean, I think all. I mean, I think all of it. You know, I mean, you, 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 you look when you, when you break down a thing, you know, a game afterwards, you are looking, you know, at approach. You are looking at schemes. And you evaluate all that stuff. So you, you, 
you put it all out there and you, you know, then you try to dissect it and figure out, you know, what's digestible before your next game. And, and so we, we, we used that as an opportunity to do that for sure. You know, SC played really well. I mean, they're, they're obviously really talented and, and, you know, Andy's had a ton of success there over the years. So I don't think it's any surprise that they played well against Arizona at home. Was that similar to any of the kind of zones? That yeah, we've been zoned throughout the year, you know, and, and it, was, it was nothing we didn't expect. We just didn't play great. We didn't play great overall. And, I mean, I think, you know, you, you, you turned the ball over a lot. You know, you could talk about the offense. You know, you, you didn't, you know, feel like you had great half court, you know. Um, offense, that could be because of their ball screen coverage. It could be your lack of ball security. It could be their zone. You know, there's so many things you look at when, when you kind of dissect it. That, that's what makes basketball fun is this, there's so many possessions and, and the game's so free flowing that sometimes it's hard to pinpoint one thing and you pinpoint one thing and you think you're a genius and, and, and then you don't focus on the six other things that really impact it as well. So, I mean, it, it's an ongoing challenge and it's usually not, you're not able to slice it down to one variable. If at all, uh, having so many players on the team have, have uh, conference tournament experience and plus with, with the amount of times that they've won games in the tournament? I mean, I uh, hope, hope you hope it helps, but you know what? You, you, there, you, you can't assume anything. You don't take anything for granted. Just because you have some guys that have had past success doesn't mean they're going to have future success. And so, you know, we, we, we got to approach it. I mean, like anything, you, you approach it one game at a time with great energy and enthusiasm and, and, and hopefully you live to see another day, and, and you just build day by day. You, you you start getting any, you start getting outside that lane, and, and I don't know if you're setting yourself up to be successful. Along the lines that Brian asked you, he also said something like human nature got us. What did you mean by that? Well, I mean, human nature is a powerful thing. You know, I mean, it's you're literally, like what I mentioned earlier, you're 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 working on your culture constantly. There, there's no such thing as a great sustained culture. It's literally something you have to work at on a daily basis. You're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. I don't care who you are. I don't care what organization you're with. Um, so, so, so getting me sorry. Get, get back to your guys. I just want to make sure I answered right. The human, the human yeah, the human nature. Human nature. Yeah, I mean, you know, we our guys, you know, won on Thursday and celebrated a little bit. And, and I was like, you know, as a coach, you're like, oh, no. You know, <laughs> we got to play on Saturday. And, 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 you know, the game that, you know, meant something to me. It means something to our program. But maybe it didn't mean anything on the final standings, you know. Like, so, you know, what was that part of it, you know. Um, you know, or, you know, or, or do you start playing a little looser or do guys think, hey, we have the league wrapped up. So maybe I can see what I can do out there today. You know, all those little things add up. What I thought, emotions and all that. Let me ask you a weird question because you see, I hear it on, on the streets. Um, it's frustrating to the uh, to the fans. You play really well and then don't. Does this team frustrate you at all at times? Um, well, I think I realize that it's hard to play great every single day. You know, it, it's not like I I know maybe fans don't understand that, and, and I appreciate and I love our fans, and and uh, I mean fans are a huge part of you know, the fuel to this mechanism that makes it go at the level it does. But, like, the, it's not just a, a constant or an upward trend. It's not how it works. There, there's ups and downs in this deal. And, and you know, you're, you're playing, you're competing against another team. You know, it's not a science experiment that you, once you've proven your theory, you know, you can reprove it over and over and over again and, you know, until it becomes like a fact. I mean, this is not like that. You have to go out and you have to compete on a nightly basis and some days it's going to go great some days it's not and and then you can you then you have to dissect why did it go good why didn't it go good and it's just it's a constant uh, evaluation one second excuse me oh, you almost brought me emotional I'm joking i'm not gonna sneeze okay i think i got it off okay yeah i i, I want to know these streets where you're getting this information from the streets of tucson okay catalina foothills streets the streets there okay good how do you prepare? How do you balance preparation when you don't know your next opponent? You know, you got a lot of one-day preps, obviously, mm -hmm. this week, but, you know, having to buy it creates a unique challenge. Well, we, you, you focus on yourself and in and, and things you can control and things you've maybe, you know, struggled against, things you've played well against. You know, you try to make sure your, your plans are succinct and clear, that your guys have a clear understanding, you know, day-to-day you know, of, of what our focus is going to be so we can go out there and try to achieve it, you know. And, and so you, re you really focus on yourself. And then, you know, we'll get to watch the game Wednesday and 
you know, we'll find out who we're going to play, and it'll be a team we've already played before, and then we'll, we'll you know, you know, make decisions right after that on what we think is going to give us the best chance to win. Get a chance to talk to you after that Wednesday game. We've already talked about USC a little bit, but what did you learn about your team in that Washington game here, especially the way they shared the ball and attacked offensively? Whew. I mean, you know, you got me. We've had a few games in between now. How many? I think two. Nine assists. Maybe okay. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, Washington's a really talented team, and you know, and Coach Hopkins is a good friend of mine. And you know, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm sad that you know, you know, to, to see him not be, you know, kept there. Uh, he's a great guy, and you know I I think his team's gonna come out fighting for him. You know I mean I think he's that kind of guy, and he has that kind of relationships with his players. So um, you know for me, it, 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 a lot of it will be just you know handling that emotional. You know if they're playing with edge and emotion, you know even fighting for their coach, you know could factor into the game a little bit. And 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 more than anything, you know. I mean, they, they come out, they, they have really talented players. I mean, you know, I mean, Keon Brooks has become a really good player. I mean, he, you know, for a guy that, you know, we recruited him and shooting wasn't quite his forte, it was more of a weakness. I mean, he's really shooting the ball well and playing at a high level. And Corin Johnson is, is you know, on a heater right now. And, you know, Wheeler is a, a, a quick athletic point guard that can penetrate at will and, you know, is, leads the conference in assists. And then Mia, you know, he, he's, a, he's a factor, the way he impacts the, the rim at both ends of the floor. So, so, and then they got some experienced, you know, s shooters and decision makers around them. I mean, they're they're really talented. So, you know, when when, when I'm looking at that, those eight nine teams, I'm like, wow, you know. And and I know every coach does that, right? I know every coach does that, and and I'll say it, you know, probably five years from now, you know, if we're lucky enough to be a one seed. But they're really talented, so we're gonna have to come out with our hard hats on and play a good game. We got one more question. When uh, when Umar addressed the crowd uh, on Senior Day, yeah. he thanked you. He said, "This is the guy who trusted me when no one did. When no one believed in me, he saw something in me." What did you see in him that maybe some other people didn't see? Well, you know, I'd recruited Umar, and and I I think when you recruit somebody, you know. You, you know, you, when you recruit somebody, you know, you try to be honest with them. You develop a great relationship with them, and then you. You know, one of the things I always try to do, and I don't know if it helps me in recruiting, I try to be pretty honest and tell them, okay, I love you, I'm excited to coach you, but this is going to be hard. This is going to be maybe one of the hardest things you ever did, and I know we're in this honeymoon phase and we're all excited, and you're going to come there, and then it's going to get hard. When it gets hard, what do you and I have? You know, am, am I, am I going to flip the page and just go to the next guy and, and everything becomes transactional? Or, you know, if you believe in us, you know, I'm going to believe in you, and I'm not going to quit on you until you quit on us. And, and I, I think that was the message. You know, I think the message is, you know, for me, I've always felt like, you know, I'm responsible for Umar. You know, he doesn't have a dad, okay? His family's in Africa. His mom doesn't speak like a, what we would consider a common world language. She speaks like an African dialect. Imagine him coming all the way over here, Goes to Gonzaga, he's some big time recruit and struggled. He struggled on and we were really good. And and you know, there wasn't a spot for him to play and he got in a funk. And, you know, I know there were certain people telling me that I shouldn't bring him down here when I got the job. And I didn't even consider that. I was like, I mean, Umar's my responsibility. I, I don't know if he's gonna make it or not make it, but I know this. If he fails, it's gonna be on my watch. I'm not gonna let another coach who I don't know coach him and it not work out. So we brought him down here, and, and I remember his first workout or two, he was, he was not in good shape. His first workout or two, I think Jack Murphy looked at me like, you sure on this one? You know, and I'm like, yeah, no, no, he's got it. And, and then Jack's like, all right. And then we rolled up our sleeves and we got to work. And, you know, one of the coolest things I saw that first year was, um, you know, Umar didn't know Christian Coloco. And those two became best friends. And they competed against each other in practice every day. They became each other's biggest supporters. And, and I think that really helped Umar. Um, and obviously we know the year Christian had and how he blossomed. And Umar really supported him. And, and Christian supported Umar. And, and I think it, it set a great precedent in our program. I see the way Umar um, handles Crevis now and Dylan Anderson. I mean, I know the conversations they're having because I'm on the inside. And the support he has for those guys underneath him is unbelievable because he knows it works. And, and that's how he's given back. So, I mean, I, I think that's what Umar meant. I mean, 
I mean, I, I always think these players are my responsibility. And I know they may not always feel that or their families may not always realize that. It doesn't always work out perfect either. I mean, let's be honest there too. But I think if you approach it like that and, and, you, and you keep it pure and genuine that, you know, more good things are going to happen than not. And, and I'm thankful for everything Umar's given me and this program. But more importantly, I'm thankful what Umar's done to set himself up for the next steps in his life. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys.